Welcome back. Today we're working on the Mitzi here. Uh, we need to take the intake manifold off and do a little bit of decoking. It's got 60 something thousand miles and it's a it's a GDI engine. It's a 494 engine, uh, 2 liter GDI. And they're suffering from completely coked up intakes. So it's a little bit of a job because you need to get everything off. Being a Japanese car, it's mostly 10 millimeters, uh, 12 and 14. So, let's take the cover, screws off. And on my Volvo, I don't, even, can't be bothered to put the cover back on. All right, so, here we are. What needs to go off is the whole uh, intake bridge here and this manifold, if that's, if that's visible, hopefully it is, um, and this manifold, which is home of the injection, uh, sorry, which is home of the ignition coils and everything. Uh, there's a gasket down there, don't start before you have the gasket because it's going to be tight. It's a fancy design because the intake is actually in between the camshafts on the top. Uh, it's a lot of wrenching, but it's probably worth it because the whole thing would be full with shit and I might be in the way. Don't know if that's any better. So basically just take all the nuts and bolts out and uh, remember where they are. I shown a video before of removing this one. Oh, let's try from this side here. Yeah. Moving a little bit because it's it's so bright. There's nothing I can do with the light here. Okay, so I'm gonna just take the hose clip loose. This one as well. It's all 10 millimeters here. These are the long ones. Black one is out. And then just pull the hose. And there is a crankcase ventilation hose on the back. It needs to come off. And then I think it just comes off. Here we go. That's all. It's basically just an air duct which comes from the air filter and goes to the intake. So now you have to take the ignition coils off completely. Uh, Take the coils off, uh, that should be enough. The engine is still warm, so it's not fun. And uh, there is a standoff down there which needs to come loose, and then hopefully, we can just tilt it over. We'll see. Let me take all the coils off, no need to film that. Um, just bolts, yeah. We've shown that in another video. When we access the spark plugs, I think it's called digging out the plugs because it's it's quite laborious to get to the plugs. Yeah, so let me do that. All the bolts, and then you pull the spark plugs out. All the plugs. So we got all the bolts out, and then you just pull them out. Yeah. Uh, the connector has a tap needs to be pressed and then you can pull it out. When you take them out have a have a closer look how they look like. Make sure they're all clean and uh, I'll put them in order. So I move it in. Yeah, just check for corrosion cracks and whatever. Okay. So we got them all out. So we don't need to take the spark plugs out, at least not now. Uh, it's actually a good idea to leave them in because if something falls down, it prevents you from uh, having something in the cylinder which you don't want to. 
because you don't really want any foreign objects in there. Okay, uh, apparently there is a standoff down here. I don't know if it's visible. There's a standoff down here which holds the whole intake. Probably with this car as everything is a bit cramped. It's not as bad as the Volvo because the engine is a little bit smaller. But uh, I think we start with the nuts and bolts of the intake. Now very first we're going to check if the gasket size is about right. Let me get the gasket. So here we got the gasket and I would say size wise it fits. They're not cheap. It's an aftermarket for Matusa but uh, it looks like it fits. Uh, spark plugs are down here. Ignition coils just go on top. Everything is mounted. Single cylinder ignition coils. No distributor. Uh, everything controlled electronically. All right, let's take the manifold bolts out and uh, well, see what moves and what not. So and that's where the problem starts here. These are. Oh, yeah, it's super tight here, but they're coming loose at least because sometimes you suffer from dissimilar metal corrosion in aluminum blocks because the bolts are steel. Now we need to access the bottom of the thing. If there can't be much more. There's a radar pipe going here. We need to take that one out. It's out of the way here. I think it's just the standoff which stops it from coming out. It's one stud, so we need to lift it. Um, I've never done it before, so we'll find out. I don't know if it's visible, but the whole intake is held with the throttle body. It's held with that bracket down there. And uh, once the bracket is loose, we should be able to lift it to get clear of that stud here. This one. And then might see the whole drama. Alright, let me do that. It's a bit of laborious work, but it's technically just getting a bracket off and then lifting it off. So we managed to get the bolts out. You need a super long extension with a card on at the end and these are the two nuts at the bottom of the intake manifold. You need a long handle because they are super tight. Uh, but now the intake should be loose. You don't need to remove the bracket, it's just the, the nuts, there are stuck in the, in the manifold. So let's try it. Well, as far as I can see, there's nothing else holding it. So, let's just give it a, a whack with a, with a soft hammer and see what happens. There must be someone, some more holder. Don't wedge it on the rocker covers, I think they're plastic, so the engine hook is coming loose at the front but it's really solid at the back so there might be another bolt or something like that I need to find it well I found it it's the bloody EGR pipe it's down here this is the EGR pipe here at the end of my extension here so this little bracket has to come off and I think there are two bolts in it and uh, that's the EGR pipe didn't know it has EGR, but apparently it has. Alright, uh, let's take that off and see what we can find. So I moved the entire engine harness out of the way. Uh, 
pulled a few vacuum lines here to get some clearance. I think I need to pull this one at the bottom, we'll see. I still haven't got all the stuff out of the way, so now I can access these two uh, bolts for the EGR valve. Let's try that. Now oh, you can get there. It needs a bit of force, they are pretty tight actually. So, on the other side. You can't really see it, you're gonna fail it somehow. And I just give it a try and see what happens. Now I can use a short orange screwdriver. Because on the other side there is your the gearbox this lipstick, it's an, out, it's an automatic here, so the gearbox lipstick is in the way. Uh, it's loose, so let's see if we can get it out. I expect some gunk in the EGR line as well, so we might need to take that out as well. We'll see how much dirt is in it. There you go, that's your little bastard sitting on the back here. Use those here. And I think these two are actually holding off from getting the thing out. As with most Japanese cars, it's nuts and bolts are coming off easy, but you can't get there. It's just so tight. There you go, that's the other one. So let's see what the each hour of that. Let me let me check if there's anything in the way and then we'll pull it. I'll try to pull it. Well there is another bracket. You can see this one here, which is over the fuel pump, there's another bolt just next to the EGR bolt, which you can't really get to. I'll try to get it out. But there is no way that a grown-up can get there. This is just, it's actually two bolts right in front of the gearbox dipstick and it's super difficult to get there. I think the 12 millimeter as well. Right, it's actually in in the bottom part of the manifold. The two bolts there, so we'll try to get it out. I wonder what they think when they put this stuff together. They put that on the pallet, put everything back together, and then they dump it into the car, and they don't care anymore. That's the problem. Excess for repair is not really concerned, as with most manufacturers. All right, let me see what I can do here. So, still battling to get the, there's another bracket down there to get it off. You take that sensor off. I think it's a temperature sensor, which sits right on the manifold. Um, that hose down there is a coolant hose, which goes to the intake or the throttle body to heat it up if you open the radiator, water comes out. So this is a water hose and this one as well here. you're wondering why I don't disconnect the battery, it's because it may play up if I do so. That's the reason why I leave the battery connected. Uh, with all these modern cars, then we might have trouble. We need to check the fault codes anyway, once we're finished. Alright, let's see. There must be another bracket somewhere. So, I decided to remove the bottle body. That gives me a little bit more room. I think I got all the pipe work loose. Uh, this is the only one. Uh, there's another one here. There's got zillions of pipes and things like that. Uh, it's these four bolts. I don't have the gaskets, so I may need to make some. But that's what we're gonna do. We need to clean it anyway, I think. Let's take it off. It's four bolts, plus the holder. And, uh, then we'll see. Lots of corrosion here. Look at that. Uh, yeah, you need to take that rubber thing off, otherwise you can't get to the bolt. So here, here we have the throttle body. Look at that, full of coal. Okay, just found another one. This pipe here, there's another bracket down here. There is a pipe on it, but I'd rather remove the holder because it's easier to get it out. Here we have the little bastard. It's just 
you can barely see it from down here and then just get there and try to get it out bastards here is one I didn't see this one right at the top I got all the brackets at the bottom the two brackets with 10 millimeter bolts or 10 millimeter heads uh, but I didn't see this one it's right behind this one here all right I don't know how much is visible, but we got quite a bit of oily sludge here, and uh, that's just one scrape here. Really difficult to see because it's hard to light. Let me try the other flashlight here. It's quite hard to see, but you see that scrape mark down there? So it's at least five millimeters of gunk. That was just one scrape. We need to clean that somehow. Uh, I don't have any walnut shells, so we just do it with some solvent and turn the cylinder on compression and then just do it on one after the other. Get the vacuum cleaner first and then see what we can do. So we came up with this idea. We filled, uh, we moved the cylinder on TDC and filled the intake with kerosene and then use a pipe brush that's all crud here so it's definitely worth it more coal harvesting here uh. so because I can't get that ring out I tried everything just to pull it out we do it, we do it the old good old two-stroke way and just burn it away late dinner time I'm knackered thanks for watching thanks for subscribing until next time mm -hmm.